three. They've only played twice in the history of the two programs. Tied up, one all. As you take a look at the shot to clear starting lineup, and as Brooke mentioned, Zach Cutherson is a stretch four, a really special player. Jalen Shaw, a 1,000 point scorer, the former South Carolina Gamecock. Three, they've only played twice in the history of the two programs. Tied up, one all. As you take a look at the shot to clear starting lineup, and as Brooke mentioned, Zach Cutherson is a stretch four, a really special player. Jalen Shaw, a 1,000 point, point scorer, the former South Carolina Gamecock. Speaking of the Gamecocks, still trying to find out who they are after losing a lot from that Final Four squad. Chris Silver, three, they've only played twice in the history of the two programs. Tied up, one all. As you take a look at the shot to clear starting lineup, and as Brooke mentioned, Zach Cutherson is a stretch four, a really special player. Jalen Shaw, a 1,000 point scorer. The former South Carolina Gamecock, former South Carolina Gamecock. Speaking of the Gamecocks, still trying to find out who they are after losing a lot from that Final Four squad. Chris Silva leads the way in the paint. Our officials are Anthony Jordan, Terry Moore, and Bart Lennox. It is cold and frigid outside, but conditions ideal inside the Colonial Life Arena. On the re-jump, Silva wins the tap. Gamecocks almost give it away. South Carolina and White, Coastal Carolina and Teal. First of four for you here on the SEC Network. This is Booker, the former FAU Owl, who's been terrific shooting the basketball this year. Manaya, the freshman, travels, and there's turnover number one. Turnover's been an issue for South Carolina lately, certainly an unforced turnover's going to do just that to head coach Frank Martin, who has been putting his guys through rough practices this week. Not a good start for the Gamecocks. South Carolina, typically a team that is on the right side of the assist to turnover ratio. Right now, in the red, 137 assists, 138 turnovers, and that'll draw a sigh or two from Frank Martin. Shot to clear. He's trying to find an open teammate. Cuthbertson left alone on an island there for a while, and then Coastal gets it right back. Robert up top to Silva and over to Booker inside. Kotsar with a jump hook shot. Not a bad look. No, I think that was a good execution from South Carolina off the fast break. You see Coastal going to have to be strong in their transition defense. Not allow South Carolina to go for their second and third chance on the boards. Over the back foul on Josh Coleman. You see Frank Martin now in his sixth year. When you think of what he did when he took over this program, which was in shambles, quite frankly, in year number five, he takes them to their... First ever Final Four, an unbelievable coaching job by Frank Martin. Yeah, he's really turned this community around and, and what Don Staley has done on the women's program. And South Carolina has enjoyed a lot of success, not just here in this university, but the entire state. The Coastal captured the baseball national championship and Clemson, of course, got the football. Manaya knocks down the triple. He's had the hot hand, double figures in five out of the last six games. Manaya is a player Frank Martin is very, very excited about. He said he's mature beyond his years. That is always a bad feeling when you're a shooter and the ball gets wedged between the rim and the backboard. Yeah, not a good start, but you know what? When I played, I allowed myself one air ball a day. You see South Carolina try to go inside and out. I like the patience. We pass outside from Kotsar. And Manaya, three-point shooter, who's still getting his college division one life about him yet he looks like an experienced player he's the freshman out of new jersey pick up ball you don't you don't get, get possession back but in college ball that gets you to the arrow and the arrow is in the favor of shot to clears lindsay gonna try again and an offensive rebound cutfordson he's a good looking athlete that they're excited about they're pretty excited about that three-pointer by jay sanders Patience is going to be a big key for Coastal on offense. Because of the way South Carolina defends you, they pressure you so much that it makes you want to speed up your offense. So spacing, going inside, reversing direction on the floor, one, two, three. That's the only way you're going to get a shot. Good ball movement. Sets up a three from Manaya, who hits the triple from the corner. I like the spacing. You saw South Carolina able to move the ball all around the perimeter, go inside and look and see what other options are there. So when Coastal's guys collapse in the paint, you're trying to attack Silva, make sure he doesn't get the ball. Coatsar, well, you forget you've got some decent outside shooters. Number 10 is somebody you've got to keep your eye on. 
the son of the former New York Mets general manager Omar Manaya. Kind of an under the radar recruit that Frank Martin, a huge baseball fan, was able to reel in. Frank is telling us he wanted to be a baseball player. Got a really good first base down in Miami. Gutbertson in the lane, bellied up by Silva. Stop and pop, and tough break there for Lindsay, but another offensive rebound. It's Cuthbertson, sets up the three from the corner, and it's knocked down by Sanders. He's got two, and six points overall. Sanders matching Manaya three for three. And you see Coastal's game plan against that zone for South Carolina. They were probably watching the Temple game, where Temple was able to get behind the defense. And North Coastal has that size to be able to compete to get those high-leaping passes and pull them down. But Coleman's working hard to try to get that position. Booker bumped and fouled on the perimeter by... I've got to look on that wing and kick it out. And that's a shooter right there, Trey Brown, a freshman. And Cliff Ellis telling us, he's a young guy, not afraid of the big moment. And it's a big one today. 815 career wins for Cliff Ellis. And a great job. At Stops at Clemson, and yes, Auburn in the SEC won an SEC championship for the Tigers. Foul is on Brown. Well, Manaya will trigger it in here. 6-6 six, six our score comes in the Coatsar. Manaya feeling it. Manaya got it. Nine points already for the freshman. I really love how he read the screen. He's the passer out of bounds, right? So not only does he set a screen, then he comes off of that screen. He sets hands and feet ready for the catch and shoot. And a beautiful execution out of bounds for South Carolina. Cutsbertson. I don't know if he caught it, but he'll take it off the window. Really good-looking player is Cutsbertson. Juco transfer. And a timeout on the floor. But the game packs up by a point. Well, when Frank Martin said Justin Minaya is more mature beyond his years, this is part of what he means by that. In his senior campaign, that is major production loss. Look at the three-point field goals lost, 93.4%. So Frank's still trying to figure out who his best guys are, who his best combinations are. I know one thing, that was my best look. There's a three from Frank Booker. Could be the end of my career, but nevertheless, 12-8. South Carolina going three ball crazy, all 12 points coming on threes. And a pass down low that did not need anybody, but out of bounds, Demario Beck with the turnover. Justin Manaya with that silky smooth stroke has been the story thus far. It's maturity and readiness to play, and all that goes back to your preparation. And this week has been a tough week of practice for South Carolina. And I'll tell you what, being here yesterday, the guys embraced it. Very physical. Craig Martin was loud. He was in the face of many of the guys on this team. But he knows that they're an underprepared team to what he likes to see. A lot of games, a minimal amount of days, not time to practice. And right now, the Gamecocks trying to get back into form. Gamecocks in the midst of an 8-2 run. Six-point lead. Coastal just trying to find the flow on offense, and that'll help. Jalen Shaw, aggressive. A thousand point score. The former game will go to the free throw line. Manaya on the foul. Coastal Carolina, a proud program that making a move upward in college football. They won the national championship in college baseball two years ago. And they made it in basketball to the NCAA tournament back in 2013. They lost to the Virginia Cavaliers in the first round, and that man, of course, was around for that. The fifth active winning as coach in college basketball, Cliff Ellis. Coach Ellis has done a great job reviving this program. In the early 90s, Coastal Carolina won four straight Big South championships. Tony Duncan was an all-star player. You see Booker hit a shot from the corner. And when I was in school at South Car or Coastal Carolina, excuse me, from 97 to 2001, the men's team was ranked fifth worst wow. in the country. And to see where he's brought this team now, very exciting. And a much more difficult conference in the Sun Belt now in their second year in that league. Incox have made six consecutive shots. Oh, Rabbit wow. trying to make it seven with a circus shot. 
Great move, had too much energy when he got close to the basket. Well, tonight we'll have a college hoops doubleheader for you on the SEC Network. Arkansas battling number 14, Minnesota at 6.45, and then at 9, it's Missouri taking on Green Bay. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. And Arkansas with a big win over Oklahoma. Also win over UConn, but that big loss, unexplainable, 26 to Houston. And they got wiped out by the Cougars. Deep three that time by Booker. And out of bounds to Coastal Carolina. I don't think Frank was in love with that shot. And typically when he's not, there's a sub coming. Like right now. And Corey Holden, who's still getting his legs back. Coming off of an injury and, and still playing at a higher weight than he was at Delaware. So carrying a little more bulk to his game. And Frank Martin just hoping he can give him some relief and some smart decisions on offense. But that's going to be a foul. Wesley Myers 35 feet away from the basket. No point in that. Another move that will not be looked upon kindly by Frank Martin. Who, let's just say you and I were witnesses to a very spirited practice yesterday. <laughs> Three ball from the corner, left short, Coastal somewhat chilly from outside. You know, what's interesting about this game, we've not seen Chris Silva get a lot of touches mm -hmm. until right now. And you see, as soon as he gets it, Coastal recognizing, trying to go in for the double. Silva was not going to be denied. denied. He was going to get a shot up no matter how many teal jerseys were surrounding him. The foul goes against Demario Beck. If you're in a double team and the player still has the ball, stay in the double team. Right. Don't leave him. That gives him an out. He's able to turn toward the middle and get the foul. Evan Hinson now in the game for the Gamecocks. Tight end on the football team. Big to big inside Silva off the window. No. Gamecocks having trouble finishing at the rim. Coastal Carolina's size a factor in this game. It's going to be a walk. walk. On Cuthbertson. And Cuthbertson, a 6'7", 185-pound junior. Cliff Ellis wants to use him as a stretch forward, which is why you see him outside the three-point line trying to put the ball on the floor. He's slightly unpolished mm -hmm. with his ball handling skills, but you see the potential. He looks the part. He's put, had to put on some weight since he first arrived at Coastal. Really razor thin. He's muscled up a bit. A pinball action. And there's Henson almost a chance on an and one. Gamecocks getting the ball inside quite a bit. It's a team that was averaging 23 three-pointers a game coming in. There's been some good interior passing from the Gamecocks, but still no finish off the foul. We've seen twice in the last two or three possessions that low bounce pass wrap around a coastal defender. You, know, you and I asked an interesting question to Frank yesterday after practice, and that was in a clutch situation, you know, who do you want to take one-on-one, -on -one, who, who, who should have the ball. Now, last year, of course, Thornwell was the answer. He actually shocked both of us. Evan Henson was the first guy he rattled off. Yeah, I was incredibly surprised. I would have expected, you know, Chris Silva down low, and maybe Beattie off the dribble, but yeah. All day, he, he, he loves the footballness and, and the toughness that Henson brings. It looks Henson's really gonna develop into a fine player. Cuthbertson, there's that drive and kick action. Back to Cuthbertson on the return and a rainbow three, nothing but nylon. He gets some arc on that sucker, doesn't he? Yeah, it was <laughs> almost hit the ceiling in here. That was a high shot, but now you see the stretch four. Stretch four means shoot those threes. I say misses one from deep. Brown on a reset. Drive and kick, sets up the open three. This is exactly what Cliff Ellis said he wanted. But you gotta knock it down. Now second corner three from Labinowitz has, they've both been short, which tells me his legs aren't getting all the way under his shot. Holden, the Delaware transfer. Knocked out of bounds, great defense by Coastal Carolina. Turnover by Wesley Myers. Four-point game. Gamecocks up on the shot to clears. 
Conference. This is a South Carolina program that used to be in the ACC. To be able to beat Duke on the way to the Final Four, that's just extra special. Incredible win. Coastal Carolina, do you like what you're seeing so far from the shots offensively? I like their poise, and I like that they're executing exactly what Cliff Ellis said. You see Jalen Shaw knock down a mid-range jumper. He said, we've got to get behind the defense, we've got to drive and kick, and we've got to hit some outside shots early. And that's what they've done. You see a terrific backdoor play. Let's grab it on the finish, his first basket. Asani grab it, a junior at Avila Rica, Georgia, a young man that's going to be asked to do a lot more this year. And there's a lot of pressure on that young man. At times he has been up to it. Yeah. At times he's been a little bit too turnover prone. Well, he's been in a couple different positions. He's been played as, as a two guard. He's played as a point guard. So he's understanding the combination of how both of those positions work and when to be what player, right? If you're going to be a pass first point guard, there's that, but you're scoring point guard or you're passing two guard. And those quick second decisions is what oftentimes leads to turnovers or on first force turnovers. It's been one of the big problems for South Carolina this year. So they've got to tighten up. Shot clock under 10. Tough shot. And Manaya top floor for the rebound. Grab it on the push. Tejase. Silva wants it down low. Immediately doubled. And the open three for Holden. As you mentioned, Corey Holden still working his way back from that knee injury. Tough take, and that's going to be a walk on Sanders. Let's go back and take another look at that pass. Terrific job by Holden to find Gravit wide open. All he had to do was cut through the defense, and that's an error on Coastal Carolina not to have the help side recognize where Gravit is. Defensively, got to have your head on that swivel. Know where the ball is. If you're in zone, know who's close to your space and who's cutting into your space. Again, Silva with a paint touch, but nice job poking it from behind by Shaw. Leading the way and missing it from close range, Cuthbertson. That's where his weight and his strength could help him out a little more. Instead, maybe grab that ball, plant your feet, give a pump fake, and go up strong against Kozar. Most of nice defense, and Silva with some of his own. <laughs> Gave a hot potato. Game of basketball, Frank found him, plucked him out. Kind of the, the, the favorite stat on Silva for me is not just the points and rebounds that you see there, but he had 12 assists all last year. I mean, like you're 13 all last year. He already has 12 this year. So he's learning the game, seeing more than he ever did. Yeah, it's huge. And especially in a game like today where he's getting double teamed, he's not trying to go up and get in traffic, right. taking bad shots. Instead, he recognizes the double team, and he's looking opposite to say, hey, who's open? Who can I kick it to? That's a blow by, and that's a great layup and an and one. What a take as he completely left Hassani Gravit in the dust. He said it. Blow by speed for Jalen Shaw, and Gravit got out of defensive position. And, Mike, this is so interesting because the coaching staff was working with Gravit yesterday about staying in front of your defender, and when he got too, too lateral, he started uh, really facing the, the sideline at that point. And that's going to give Shaw a freeway to the basket. And I think that's exactly what Frank Martin just mentioned to him. And the free throw rattles in a three-point play for Jalen Shaw. Well over 1,000 points. Grab it to the bench after the foul. Two-point game. Silva hacks, and he'll go to the free throw line. Josh Coleman bumping bodies with the 6'9 junior. I really like the position and Chris Silva put him in. Got some strength in that wide base. He made it so easy for the guards to pass him the ball. Cliff Ellis hoping the principle of verticality would work in his favor. <laughs> Did not on that play. I think Coleman might have been just outside of the charge circle. It's a big part of the, the game for not only Silva, but the Gamecocks as a whole, because Chris Silva has a really amazing, amazing stat attached to his resume. He is leading the nation in free throws per 40 minutes, nine and a half, which is a staggering number. So when he gets the ball down low, he draws fouls. And he shoots 71%. So what does that tell you? Get him the ball down low. That's right. Easy formula. 
Into the corner, another driving kick three, and this time knocked down by Sanders. That shot seems to be there all day. He's been a big time shooter today, but Benaya trying to match him. Poked around to Silva, down low, Hase. And one, the hoop and the horn for the freshman. Take another look at the play. A lot of bodies on the ground. Good hustle. And that bullet pass to Chris Silva. He likes it. One more assist. To rack it up for the big man. Third foul on Coleman. Hase coming off a 17-point effort and a win against Wyoming. Good-looking freshman. A guy at 6'9 that has a much, much more finesse to his game. A really good shooter. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a tough position for Postal without Coleman in the game. You take out... A lot of size, six foot nine. Josh Coleman no longer in the paint. Open three from the wing. Rims off, Silva. Had it stripped away. Hase cleans it up. Myers on a crossover. A leaner. Tapped around into the hands of the shot to clears. Here comes Shaw all the way. Missed the layup. Bounds. It will remain Coastal Carolina basketball. Shaw trying to do what he can to protect a shot from being blocked. Went for the reverse. Maybe put a little too much English on that play at the end. Freshman Trey Brown checks back in. Shaw to the bench. You know he's got a little extra adrenaline pumping through his veins. Playing his old school before he transferred out. Another open three. The looks are there. Coastal has just been hot and cold, knocking him down. And Lubinowitz now, knowing he shot two short shots, is trying to make that effort extra effort. It's a little more arc on his play. He jumped higher. Still off for his three-point shot. And Vincent checking back in for the Gamecocks. And we talked about Coastal Carolina and their balance. Sanders, Shaw, Cuthbertson, they've got all 21 of the points right now for Coastal. Sanders trying to get his name in that big four. Eight minute mark in the first half. Gabe got up by four. Third beating between the two schools as Henson pulls up mid range. Battle for the ball. Manaya comes away with it. And he's hacked on his way to the hoop. Frank Martin is wired. We'll hear what the head coach of the Gamecocks has to say. Martin so so demanding of defense and demanding of his players, but you know, understanding it is the little pieces that when they're put together the right way, it's gonna give you a championship run. So it's make sure you're in right the right position defensively. Don't overshoot, pass the ball when someone's open. It's a lot of times in basketball. It's simple plays that are not easy, mm -hmm. and when the best can do the simple plays over and over and over, that's what makes the greatest teams. You played for you played three different sports, so you had several different coaches. I'm sure a few of them played into you a few times, right? Are you kidding me? I almost left my freshman year. Coach LaForce and I, we were oil and water. <laughs> I was ready to go home. Nice interior pass and a two-hand stuff for Demario Beck, who is enjoying life off the bench, his instant offense. And speaking of instant offense, baseline drive by Evan Henson. You can understand why Frank Martin wants the ball in his hands. Evan Henson has that nice big body to work with. No Coastal Carolina player, I think, wants to step up and take a charge. It's a lot to deal with from number 23. It's off the foot of Silva, kick basketball. Coastal Carolina with that drive and dish, exactly what you want to see. Cuthbertson, beautiful pass to Beck for the finish, and a good job by Cuthbertson to recognize when the defense steps up. You got to stop your dribble right there, either shoot it or pass it, but don't keep going into the defense and expect a foul to be called. Tried to pass about a two-foot pass in the paint. That's dangerous. A turnover for Shaw. And a heartbeat too late. Had he made that pass initially on the jump stop, it would have been there. There's a runner no good. Silva doing what he does best, offensive rebounding. And now leading the pack. Lobinowitz all the way. Lobinowitz draws the foul. And he'll go to the free throw line as he's hacked by Frank Booker. You know, Brooke, this game has a weird feel because in a lot of ways, I feel like South Carolina is dominating. And you look at the scoreboard, it's only a six-point game. And Coastal Carolina has been able to hit some key threes and avoid South Carolina going on a run. 
So defensively, they're making sure Chris Silva isn't going to burn them today. Every time he's got a touch, it's a double team. Now, how that's going to work with Evan Hinson in the game, you can't do that. You can't leave one man to t take him away from Hinson to go to Silva or Hase, for that matter. In Coastal Carolina, they executed the game plan. That's why this is a five-point game. And the coats are in. Silva's going to take a rest. Artur Labinowitz, the sophomore. Two for two at the stripe, and it's a four-point game. This will be interesting throughout the year to see how South Carolina does with Silva not on the floor. Where do they get the offense? Bradley would be a candidate. Misses. Coatsar comes up with a loose change. Under six and a half to go, first half, and a bump foul on the perimeter by Lindsay. And the Gamecocks with the benefit of the double bonus for the remaining 627 first foul on Lindsay. This is a key cog. We, we showed you that graphic about all the, that they lost in terms of production from Thornwell and Dozier, two guys that went out of the NBA. Somebody's got to provide that shooting and leadership in the guard spot and a lot of pressure on Hassani Gravitt. And, you know, not to divulge too much information, but he had to develop some thick skin in practice yesterday because he was getting some heat from Coach Martin. And, and Coach Martin says that he's becoming more coachable. And, you know, unfortunately, that means you're going to get yelled at a lot more. But a lot of times, it, you know, if, if your coach isn't paying attention to you, that's the real problem. Right. So as a player, you'd rather have somebody yell at you than not say anything at all. Tough love is better than apathy. And the foul down low. Coastal will go back to the free throw line. Fouls on Evan Hinson. When you get fouled by Evan Hinson, you're going to feel it. That's 6'4", 240 coming at you, and a guy that plays in a collision sport. Played just two minutes a game last season. And clearly in a more productive role this year. He's going to make an impact. And you have to think about how long it's going to take for him to get into both practice and game shape. Football is one sport. Basketball involves a lot more right. cardio, four and five minutes runs at a time. It's not just a one play and, and done like football is. You have two seconds to catch your breath. So he'll be called for the travel here. Another unforced turnover. Hanson's he's going to have a busy uh, two weeks because pretty soon he's going to join his comrades at the Outback Bowl. The Gamecocks getting ready to take on Michigan. Will Muschamp doing a great job in year two. Two years took it from three and nine to an eight-win team this season. High ball screen for Shaw. And a foul on the reach in. That's going to be on Gravit. And that's his second. And it's the second time we've seen Gravit far away from the ball, not be able to stay in front of the defender laterally. So it's not about his quickness, because he is one of the quickest players out here on the court. It's about Excuse me, how you step lateral, which angles your feet take to stay in front. And right now, he's using all the wrong angles and allowing Coastal's guards to turn that corner, to come around that screen and beat him off the dribble. Eight points for Jalen Shaw. Make it nine. And it's a two-point game. Coats are drive stop and then the hook shot great move by the big man Mike Kozar. Kozar has been attacking more than he ever has this season even though he worked on his three-point shot in the offseason he's got that nice touch terrific backdoor play uh, Coastal beating the pressure it's exactly what Temple did to them last week to Mario Beck goes back door Manaya left alone for three he was hot early hit three right out of the box here comes Coastal on a run out. Cuthbertson leading the way. Cuthbertson banks it home, and we are tied at 32. Seven points for Cuthbertson. Grab it on a pull up. A brick, but there is Hase on the follow. -up. Gamecocks winning the battle. On the offensive glass. Shaw. 
Gutfordson thought about it and leaves it off. Great interior pass. Dropping a dime to Demario Beck. That was a good possession for Coastal Carolina. They could have settled on two bad shots. Instead, they got a better one. A Booker, a force to be dealt with on his own right. Three threes in six of his last nine games. Heating up from beyond the arc. And he's really kind of turned into their best shooter, the former Owl of FAU. Three ball from the corner. Coastal Carolina heating up to Mario Beck. And the shot to clears have the lead. That's the first lead for Coastal Carolina. Now Coats are so open in the paint. Gamecocks late to get him the ball. Manaya stepped out of bounds. Great ball movement. But that heel on the line. Coastal Carolina making things interesting here. They've got the lead. KG veteran Cliff Ellis knows a thing or two about pulling off some upsets. He's actually 18 and 10 all time against South Carolina, going back to his days as a head coach at Clemson and Auburn. Ball comes into the corner, and a no-no. Manaya, the freshman, fouls the three-point shooter, Labinowitz, and that'll spell three free throws. Second foul on Justin Manaya. Some early mistakes in this game for Manaya, including the turnovers where he stepped out of bounds or traveled with the ball in his hands without being guarded, and here, a foul on a three-point play. And you see, he's looking toward the bench. He knows his time is done. Benoit's out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Polish descent. And Manaya will take a seat on the bench and give way to Corey Holden. There's a big four that we talked about, and so far, so good. And Labinowitz has been really the only player, it seems like, for Coastal that hasn't been able to heat up. It's a free throw there, and his outside shot not fallen so much for him, but the defense for Coastal Carolina also working well. Labinowitz will take a rest. And still the game plan to keep the ball out of the hands of Chris Silva in the post. Goes to one of the 11-4 run. Silva trying to show off some range. That's an element of his game that was not there a year or two ago, but he's developing. A big sigh of relief for South Carolina to get some offense. It seems like it's been coming in spurts for them. A dry spell these last few minutes. Three on the way, knocked down by Beck. He is on fire. Well, every big shot South Carolina has hit, Coastal Carolina has come right back with the answer. Game Did not high. expect to see Beck hit the three today. No, and a game high 13 for Beck. Not sure we expected that off the bench in just a half a play. On Monday, the SEC Nation team will have complete breakdowns of where all the SEC teams have landed in each of their respective bowl games. It is the most wonderful time of the year. And, of course, two SEC teams in the college football playoff, Alabama and Georgia. A lot of excitement in the air in Tuscaloosa and Athens. You see a lot of football. You call a lot yes. of football. So Can't get give, enough. give me your take. I tell you what, I, I'm going to go ahead. Thank you for putting me on the spot, Brooke. I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to go ahead. I think Baker Mayfield and Oklahoma right now for me is the best team going. I think they're the most unstoppable offense. I know defense wins championships, but I'm, I'm in love with the way they're playing right now. It would be great to see Georgia pull it off there. Georgia has not been in the game of this magnitude in a long, long time. See what the Georgia fans have been doing lately. Terrific trolling on the part of the Bulldogs yes, fans. <laughs> wow, that's next level, guys. Good got, job. Got Baker Mayfield's digits. <laughs> and by the way, for those complaining about Ohio State not getting in, it's simple math, folks. Two losses versus one. Advantage Alabama. Out of bounds to Coastal Carolina with 2.21 to go. See Frank Martin is relentless on his guys right now. He feels the tension in his in this game Knowing his team has not been able to execute the way that he's designed and practiced this whole week and, and so you can see the effect that practices have He wants more of them because the little things matter in big games and against an in-state rival the pressure is on I say that ball is off the foot of Wesley Myers that last miss by Coastal Carolina, that's the first missed field goal since the eight-minute mark. And for six minutes, they've just been draining shot after shot. 
A high scoring first half here. How about Josh Coleman back in the game with three fouls? Interesting move, for Coach Ellis. Kick ball and the holding pass. A minute 42 to go, one point game. Gamecocks coming into this one seven and two. Coastal Carolina five and four. It's a matchup that Cliff Ellis has been yearning for for a long time. To get a matchup in state against South Carolina. Nothing but good can happen for his squad. Look at that block by Sanders. Give me that. Top floor on the rejection. And then Sanders on a three. What an exchange there for Sanders. Block on one end, three on the other, and the lead is four. And a foul on Coastal. Let's watch A.J. Sanders rise up and take that with him. And then the payoff on the other end, love the hustle. And doing it in front of South Carolina's bench in front of an extended Chris Silva. A lot of moxie in this young guy. He's a junior. And he's known as the defensive stopper on this team. So we got a little bit of both it's defense and offense on that last play. Really the only piece of bad news in this half for Coastal Carolina. Josh Coleman goes to the bench with four fouls. Risky move to put him back in there with yeah, three. I, I don't know why you put him in at all. You got a three-point lead with two minutes left in the first half. But let it go because you need that big body in the second half. Now he's going to be playing with a complete different sense of awareness out on the floor. One more and I'm gone. Right. And three, at least you got a little buffer. And Coastal's going to have to play with a much smaller lineup for much of this game. Kick out pass. Oh, wait. That's hit by Silva, who took some air out of the basketball on that block. And Chris Silva, I think, is mad at himself for not keeping the ball in bounds. You know what? The, those kind of blocks, they, they just look so much better. Do, I get it they? as a coach, what you want. Right. But, whew, that was gorgeous. Nice one-handed runner in the lane by Shaw. Shaw with 11 points. Lead is four. Myers, spot and fire three, rattles it home. First bucket for Myers. Transfer from Maine. And a timeout called by Coastal Carolina with 34 seconds left. Well, Frank Martin's been very spirited the last few games. That's, that's just Frank Martin basketball in terms of wanting his guys to have that toughness and you, know, you probably don't have to work guys as hard a year ago when you got Thornwell and you got those are guys that know the game plan but a lot of these guys are still figuring out how to play winning basketball the challenge for Frank Martin and his young guys is how do I allow them to enjoy a win a good game you almost can't you have to go drill right back into practice because with a young team you give them an inch and they take a mile. They don't know how quite to stay in discipline all the time. Whereas a team with Sidarius Thornwell, if there's something going wrong in practice or on the floor, he's going to be the first guy to correct it before Frank Martin even says something. Shot clock is off. Gamecocks down by a point. Who's your go-to here? Down to six. Down to three, and Myers gets bailed out with a foul. He's off balance. A little slice and dice, he'll go to the line. Another possession where the Gamecocks had great inside position to, to score an easy basket. Mike Kotsar was below the charge circle in front, calling for the basketball. He put South Carolina on the line, but those easy scores inside, something they've got to just do automatically. The easy play, make it. Give it to Kotsar. Let him go up. He's not a great foul shooter, so you want to hope he finishes on that play. At least you got some inside scoring. That opens up the outside much more. Myers splits the freebies. Final chance for Coastal before the end of the half. Good if it goes. 
I line but short, and we are even Steven at the end of the half. The shot to clears, and Gamecocks nodded up at 47. Demario Beck off the bench. Nice pass from Lubinowitz. The drive and kick. Will it work in the second half for the shot of clears? You heard Jimmy Dykes at the half amazed at how many times the Gamecocks were beaten off the bounce in that first half. We'll see if they tighten things up here in the second half. As the Gamecocks have possession of the ball first again. 47 points, good offensively. Not so much on the defensive end. Grab it, trying to continue. The hot shooting, it's Silva on the follow. Hangs on the rim, no. Batted around, scooped up by Coatsar. South Carolina going to want to get an early score here in the second half to set that tone, settle things down offensively. And you see the motto, hey guys, get to the rim. Attack the paint. And great job by Booker to find an opening. Frank Booker has been a real pleasant surprise. Only averaged about five and a half points a game last year, or two years ago at FAU before transferring over to Columbia. Shot clock under 10. Cuthbertson bellied up by Coatsa. Now two. I don't know if Cuthbertson knows. He's going to have to throw up a heave. He does, and that'll be a shot clock violation. Not a good start and a possession for Coastal Carolina. I have an unnamed source sitting behind the Coastal Carolina bench who told me that out of the huddle and out of the halftime, Cliff Ellis was stressing defensive stops and energy level. Big points of emphasis here early in the second half because you don't want South Carolina to get on a run and realize that hey, we should be dominating this game and this team. It wasn't Yoda, your unnamed source. It was not Yoda. Okay, just checking. Can't, can't reveal. <laughs> If it was, we'd have one heck of a story. Josh Coleman just picked up his fifth foul with 18.36 to go. So one of the few things that has gone wrong for Coastal in this game, one of their top big men out for the rest of the day. Now they'll have to play small and continue to shoot the basketball well from outside. Skip pass over to Booker. He throws it right away. Another turnover on the Gamecocks. Well, the sloppier this game becomes, might favor that man, Cliff Ellis, in Coastal Carolina. Well, he wants to be disruptive in whatever way is possible. And South Carolina is usually that team. They want to break you down, make the game ugly, play defense hard, and make you work for shots. And that's, that's just not what I'm seeing. Coastal is moving the ball so well. We heard Jimmy Dykes say that going into the, the halftime. And South Carolina has got to get more aggressive on defense. It's, it's weird to even say that. No. You, you never have to remind these guys. But Coastal out hustling the Gamecocks. And you want to talk about something else that defies a Frank Martin team. Normally, they're outstanding on the glass. They're plus eight rebound margin. Just gave up an offensive rebound and stick back there. 47, by the way, that's the most amount of points the Gamecocks have given up in a half this year. Sanders with a career high now for Coastal. 14 points. See the way the shot clears are sagging off, forcing South Carolina and daring them to shoot from the outside. And Minaya, good job keeping his dribble alive. Just keep poking the defense, finding the way to get through those gaps. You got a short runner. Beck left alone. Beck continues his sharp shooting off the bench. Just no coverage on the screen and roll. A wide open three point shot for Beck. Silva, another paint touch, another double team. And a foul over the back on Coatsar. First foul on the 6'10 sophomore from Estonia. Imagine what's going through the mind of Frank Martin yeah. right now and what he told his guys at halftime. And it just doesn't seem that they've come out in the second half yet with any different mm -hmm. energy level, no intensity. Uh, not the South Carolina team that we saw in practice yesterday. Not at all. Picking up a little bit there, forcing a coastal turnover. I feel sometimes we're always obligated to point this out even though i'm sure most people out there know it but it, 
all these games, November, December, when the committee is looking at things in March, they all count the same no matter where it is on the schedule. In other words, a win in December or a loss is the same as whether it comes in March. But Silva gets the end one. A game like this is very meaningful for both these teams for a number of different reasons. This is the simple play. Chris Silva made it look easy. Finally getting over the top of the defense. That's Demario back at 6-8. And with Coleman out of the game, this is what South Carolina has to do. That's the guy who brings you to the dinner table. You gotta <laughs> feed him. He draws nine and a half fouls per 40 minutes. That's tops in the country. And draws a hack on the end one. He's got 13 in Carolina. The South Carolina game backs up by two. Just a force that time by Shaw in the trees. Another and one, this time by Frank Booker. And that'll ignite the crowd. Light at the end of the day. And we'll see how that has an effect on his team. Because late in the game, if things get tight and the call doesn't go a certain way, maybe the players react the way the coach does. And if they can keep it, if he keeps it light, Perhaps they will too. Second consecutive and one opportunity nullified by the missed free throw. Four point lead for the Gamecocks. Coastal's got some foul trouble to deal with in the rest of this game. Jalen Shaw still dealing with a hot hand. And a much better decision by Shaw to pick up the ball and shoot that runner, that floater, instead of taking one more dribble and trying to get into the body of Silva. Manaya sets up the play up top. Finds Gravit. Silva. Kick out. Swing. Gravit. Coatsar. Booker. And Manaya flying into the rebound. And then lost it out of bounds. Jalen Shaw, one of Coastal's most consistent players, off the dribble once again, breeding, beating attack. That's what's going to break open this game. You see Gay with the 14 steps. It takes Chris, who's their best runner, about 15 steps. Can we cross out that 18? I like 17 and a half. 17 and a half. I'll yeah. give you 17 and a half. Give me a little edge. Come on. Brooke will be running suicides at the, at the end of today's <laughs> no broadcast. Make sure you stick around for Get that. Get out of the airport. Exactly. <laughs> Shot to clears at the half court. Two-point game. Strong take. No. And there. Reeling in the rebound is Hase. Inside, Silva goes to work and is fouled. And I'm not sure now, especially with the foul trouble, if anybody's going to have an answer for Chris Silva and Teal. No, I, I don't believe there is. He's just too strong, and he's too good at positioning himself to get the basketball. So unless Costa wants to start fronting him and get some backside help, and your biggest guys in the game, Beck and Cuthbertson, have got to do a lot of work right now down the stretch to both double Silva and help out on some of the other shooters. South Carolina, too big. It might be too deep to go down the stretch for Coastal to hang. Silva expected to be one of the top big men in the SEC this year, which is loaded with quality big men. When you look around the conference this year, which I believe will be the deepest SEC we've seen in 10 years. And there are no shortage of talented big men. All right? I mean, you got Kentucky. But then you look at a team like Texas A&M, 7-0, Tyler Davis, Robert Williams, D.J. Hogg, with just some incredible size in the SEC and a broken play. That leads to an open layup for Coastal. The right place, right time for Trevion Brown. His first basket. Pull-up jumper. That's a shot that Kravitz got to start hitting. Hassani grabbed it with a good look but did not hit the jump shot and that's the guy again we talked about filling those voids major voids left by Thornwell and Dozier you've got to have guys like Rabbit producing some points for you well watching the rhythm of that last play Booker was in the corner to get a three but let's go back and look at this foul here for Coastal well excuse me not the foul it led to the bucket and Beck just got out of control lost his balance and looking for Deshaun Clears Brown was there to pick it up Inside, 
And an easy deuce for Demario Beck. He's been special. A lot of fun to watch today. 18 points for Beck. Yeah, and against Hampton, their last game, 16 points, seven boards, two blocks, but no turnovers in 20 minutes. That's Cuthbertson. I thought he was going to throw that one down. You see his speed and length. He got down the length of the floor in about 13 of the right. steps. He, I think he might have won if we had a little runoff <laughs> yesterday. A 6-0 run for Coastal Carolina. The timeout called with 13.50 to go. came off the bench for that Auburn team. And Cliff was quick to point out when we were talking to him earlier today. They made it to two sweet 16s. He was a national coach of the year that season, by the way. And had a great run at Auburn. You might even say Auburn basketball has not been the same since during that stretch he had from 99 to 2004. Maya puts it on the deck, leaves it off for Myers. Around the horn to Coxar. Good look. But he can't find it. Terrific box out by the Shawna Clears. Three point shy, usually the rebounds are long, and everybody had a body. It's New Jersey to White. Jefferson goes out to Beck. And finally, Beck misses a shot. Silva jumps off his trampoline for the rebound. No field goals for the Gamecocks in over a three-minute span. You know, this was an offense last year. He went through a drought like that. He said, give it to Thornwell, and he'll, he'll get you a bucket or he'll go to the free-throw line. Not sure who it's going to be this year for Frank Martin and company. Yeah, there's there's no true drought buster yet at this point, but Frank Martin has pointed to guys like Wes, Wes, Wesley Myers, excuse me, a three-point shooter, Booker on the floor, Manaya. There's not a clear sense of leadership with this young club. Think about how much they lost in leadership, in experience, in point production, three-point shooting. That is a heck of a lot to replace in a short amount of time. It really is. It's tough enough for any team losing some players. You're going to a little bit of an identity crisis. South Carolina might be in one right now. One-point game under 13 to play. Finally clearing it was Booker. A little helter skelter on that possession. Swing pass, Booker on a three. Yes. on the other end by Matt Lindsay. Just like the first half, when South Carolina hits a big shot, Coastal has been there to answer. Manaya driving to the bucket. Frank Martin is on fire. With Manaya out of bounds. Not sure what it is, what mistake he made. And Martin giving him a stare down. Second foul on Labinowitz. Booker. Into the corner, Manaya pulls a trigger on a three. Missed it too strong. Down low, and that'll be a walk. Cuthbertson couldn't help himself from dragging that pit of foot. Frank Martin, they have caught their coach's ire trying to avoid an upset at home against the Chanticleer. You think about preseason predictions in a 14-team league. Tennessee was picked 13th. I've had the volunteers this year. I'm going to tell you something. If that's the 13th best team in this league, <laughs> it's a really good league because they're a good team. Rick like Barnes, I absolutely love what I see in Knoxville. I love what I saw with that drive until Coatsar was unable to finish. Yeah, you got to finish the play, but that's exactly what Coatsar has been working on and has been better at this season. Attacking the rim, and you heard the crowd get hyped up for that play, and no finish. This defense from the game cops. Silva on a block after an up and under move by Shaw. One thing Chris Silva has done 
very well in this game and he has improved this season. Foul trouble. He does not have a single foul with 11 and change to go. I can't remember a game where Chris Silva didn't have a foul in the second half. And even more so this season, he's learning how to play while he's in foul trouble. Hasn't had to deal with that this afternoon. That's been Coastal's problem, actually. He's only gotten DQ'd once all year, has Silva. Hase travels. Frank Martin says, Hase, you will join me on the bench. 11th Gamecock turnover. How many of those have we seen that have been unforced? Right, Stepping on the that. line, traveling with the basketball, you got light pressure in your bigger guys, like Hase, 246, 249. 249. Get him a little close to the basket. Mm -hmm. He's not ready to put the ball on the floor and to make moves with it, so put him in a position where he can be successful with a catch and turn. Cut puts in on the ball by Silva on a rejection. And it leads to a three. No, Silva mistimed his jump, and that paves the way for a putback by Bamba. Amadou Bamba. How High up for that rebound. How about this for Bamba? He played on the Canadian national team, the under-19 team. That's a team that upset the American squad led by Coach Calipari. They actually won the gold. Canadian basketball, the men's and women's side. It's getting very strong. Given Team USA a lot of problems the last few years. We've seen so many Canadians work their way playing college basketball now. It seems like every roster has got at least one of them. No doubt. One point game, under 10 minutes to play. Silva battling desperation. Toss up to the rim by Bamba. I don't know if Bamba was ready for that pass from Shaw. That was a bullet bounce pass. He tried to go behind the defense to Silva. That's That was terrible positioning on the pass. He couldn't do anything with that. Frank's team testing his patience right about now. I can only imagine. After what we saw, the intensity level in practice yesterday, they're not executing nearly to the level that he had them at yesterday. And that's that's what practice is for. Absolutely. To, to get that intensity up so high, so by the time you get to a game, it doesn't feel like this anxious moment. Shouldn't phase you, right? Right. He cuts up a little phase at times in this game. Cuthbertson pivots and fires silky smooth mid-range jumper by the junior. I think the thing that's impressed me most about Coastal Carolina today is their poise when they catch mm -hmm. the ball. A lot of other teams I watch when they play South Carolina, there's a look of panic. You can tell in the eyes. You know the pressure's coming and the defense is so intense. Benowitz might have gotten away with a tiny little walk there. Three no good. But Coastal able to keep their poise when they catch the ball to make the right next decision. Kotsar blows by, throws it up, missed it. And another great move from Kotsar. Lindsay leading the pack. Nothing there, trying to find a teammate he does. Dangerous pass, and Kotsar just couldn't keep his mitts on it. Benowitz decided at the top of the key he wanted to make that pass yes, under the did. basket no matter if it was open or not I can come I can relate to that all day you just you get something in your mind and you're, you stick to it well a moment of atonement there he hits the jumper a five-point lead for Coastal Carolina that is the largest for the shot to clears today So away from the ball 69 64 our score coming up next the multilingual South Carolina Gamecocks We'll learn some languages when we come back Joe Not an easy process. That's the kind of game. It really is a great test You know, we are inching closer and closer to conference play most of the games are going to be much closer in league play I'll be very curious to see how Frank Martin's group responds here down late in a game at home 
against a Coastal Carolina team that, quite frankly, does not have much to lose, and they're playing carefree and with a whole lot of confidence. Well, what's going to win this game for South Carolina is simply their toughness. And this is a team that plays in the SEC. They see hard games every night, especially in conference play. So for them, now it's pride. You're going to let this quote-unquote little school from Conway, South Carolina, come in and beat us on our floor? I don't think so. And meanwhile, Coastal Carolina is still trying to get their name out there and, mm -hmm. and to be a national relevant presence team. Big move from the Big South to Sunbelt. And taking on some bigger clubs. And Cliff Ellis had to beg Frank Martin yes, to take did. this game on for five years, and I think we can see why. Only the third meeting between the two schools. The last one coming in 1993. Shot clock under 10. Stop and pop, and a nice bucket for Jalen Shaw, the former Gamecock. He has 15. Manaya finds Booker on a three. Got it. Booker's feeling it. In the first half, it was Manaya. The Gamecocks were looking to find him, and now some full court pressure. Let's see how the Shana Clears deal with it. But well, Booker's the guy you want the ball in his hands right now. Frank Booker has taken over offensively for South Carolina. That's a walk. Sanders can't hold the pivot foot. So one end, Booker hits the big three and forces Coastal into the turnover. And Frank Martin's still not pleased with the call. Kotsar hands it off to Manaya. Rabbit cuts the baseline and gets it on the wing. Shot clock down to five for Silva. Takes it strong in the trees and draws the foul. And because Silva has hit a three in this game, you have to respect it. He doesn't look ready to take that three. You sense that he wants to put the ball on the floor, so Coastal's got to do a better job of forcing him to go baseline and getting that help before he gets to the block. And a couple of guys were not where they were supposed to be on that set. Silva bails him out. You know, Cliff Ellis told us yesterday he would mix up his defense as we'd see a lot of zone. A little surprise there to see man-to-man. -man. A bit, because you're in foul trouble. You'd think you'd want to go to zone to try and protect that, but clearly there's something that Cliff Ellis sees in his defense that he feels is better suited against South Carolina's offense. And what looked to be a tie-up. And it's going to be a foul on Silva. First foul on Silva all game. You can see why Frank Martin is so upset at that call. Really felt like Silva had an equal chance on that ball. Gamecocks oh. dialing up full court pressure and almost a steal got poked away. Shaw wants a ball screen. Probing, step back, nothing there. A tough shot, wild. Offensive rebound, and the bucket is good for Demario Beck. He just beats Silva to the spot. 20 points for the senior. And a foul on Coastal. Gamecocks. We'll have the benefit of the bonus the rest of the way. Final 542. This has been a nip and tuck affair from the opening tip. Jalen Shaw trying to take it to his old team late. One after the steal. And too risky, in my opinion, because Booker can beat you with that three-point shot. He can put it on the floor, and you don't have the help side of your big guys who can afford a foul or try to block your shot if you get beat on defense. You've got to stay in front right now and contain. Gamecocks have been dreadful at the free throw line this year, 65%. And finally, Fred Martin has been begging for that carry call from the opening tip, and he finally got it. And he knows his tendencies. He coached him. Right. So he knows he carries the ball and has been campaigning for it all game. He has been pleading for this call for 35 minutes, and there it is. That's an easy one right there. 
he's been dribbling like that all game. So it, in my opinion, it's a little more subjective than that. But I think at times it certainly has been a carry. 13 turnovers on Coastal. Silva draws the double. Around the horn, grab it on a three. Rabbit has been cold, but he tracks down the rebound. Skip past Booker, spot and fire. Too strong, and over the backboard, out of bounds. Two good looks, but an empty trip for the Gamecocks. Demario Beck has been the man today off the bench with 20 points. In the corner for three. Kicks off. Won't get a better look. One possession game. Grab it, throw it away. Telegraph the pass. Okay. He looked exactly where he was going to throw it. Easy for Lindsay to stick out his hand and grab that ball. And then Booker whistled for the foul. It's the fourth team foul on the game, Cox. The second on Booker. I mentioned that free throw number in a game like this it very well could come down to free throws and South Carolina has really struggled at the line. Yeah, they have just a 64% free throw shooting team. And for Coastal, that might be their advantage going down the stretch with limited bodies. They attack the basket, see what you can do on offense and on defense. If you don't have a shot, look for Coatsar. Fallon, he's just a 30 or excuse me, a 29% free throw shooter. Silva secures another rebound. You don't want Booker with the basketball, that's for sure. Manaya dropped a perfect pass, grab it. Somehow cut it away before walking. Nice Coatsar takes it strong and a beautiful feed from Silva. Good luck, good patience, and the movement from the big guys. They didn't stop when someone got, had the basketball. Coatsar great at moving without the ball in that possession. Timeout, Cliff Ellis and Coastal Carolina with 3.46 to go. And Chris Silva has been the big man for South Carolina. And here he finds a key assist. Propelled this great run in the second half. But foul trouble certainly will play a factor here, particularly for Coastal. And the final three minutes and change. Shot clock down to five, an open three, knocked down by Lobinowitz. Pressure mounting now for South Carolina. Down four with the basketball. And with Lobinowitz on the run in that play, Mike, is grab it. It's an open jump shot for the first time in a few minutes. Big sigh of relief for South Carolina. He's now two of eight on the day, but in that last play, when Labinowitz had that open jump shot, it was two South Carolina players, Booker and Kotsar, that ran into each other. Booker to Manaya. Manaya rejected. Cuppers it on the block. Booker on a three. No. Silva taps it up. Coastal clears. Here come the shot to clears. Another three. Labinowitz too strong. Coatsar tears away the rebound. <laughs> Who becomes option number one for the Gamecocks here? Silva to Coatsar. Coatsar all the way to the bucket and we're tied. Standstill defense for Coastal Carolina. For the game, partner. Two minutes left. It's tied. Could have asked for more. Yoda, Darth Vader, Stormtroopers <laughs> all entertained here at the Colonial Life Arena. 76 all as Cliff Ellis has just. It's not about the big play. It's about attention to detail. So we'll see who does a better job at that in the next two minutes. Again, no timeouts left now for the shot to clears. Two minutes to go. Tie game. Back up top, outed by Silva. Cuthbertson takes it strong. Silva tears away the rebound. Manaya feeling it. Manaya too strong. 
Shaw boards it. Coastal has it, and they'll take their time. Well, I think you'd want Beck to touch it at some point. He's trying to post up on Silva. And it looks like Cliff Ellis wants to bring his big guys out to spread the floor and try and take them off the dribble to get inside. <laughs> Brilliant strategy. What a shot by Shaw on the run, fading away off the glass. He's got 17. <laughs> and a foul, I believe, away from the ball. They got Lebenowitz away from the ball, his third. And the double bonus the rest of the way for the Gamecock. So two free throws upcoming for Gravit. And he's shooting 66% on the year. You see Lebenowitz raising his palms to say, are you guys sure that foul's on me? But he wants to take it to keep Beck and his, his fouls low. One for two for Gravit. One point game, under a minute to play. South Carolina might want to look for a trap in the corner, see what they can come up with. Postal's done a good job managing the ball and the pressure this entire game. Again, no timeout. That's an over and back. That's an over and back. And Shaw stepped over the half court line, and then with that next move, came back. See how it affects this possession. Shaw left it off to Cuthbertson, who had it blocked. What Shot a big time play. Is off. Grab it, lobs one to Manaya. And Manaya stepped out of bounds. That's just a bad pass by Grab it, who led Manaya astray. 15th turnover. Coastal Carolina, you want the ball in the hands of Jalen Shaw, 84% free throw shooter. Comes in the Rabinowitz. Rabinowitz has an open man. It's Beck, and he lost it out oh of bounds. Goodness. Oh, Beck had an easy layup or dunk if he holds on. Well, I'm going to tell you what I think just happened. Beck wanted it up top. Labinowitz gave him the bounce pass because he didn't think he was going to be able to pass it over Silva. So Beck, with his hands up, had to go with his hands down to try to catch that pass. And the nerves of Chris Silva coming at you, not easy to manage that basketball. Asana Gravit might have some nerves, too. He's getting a, a mouthful every day, 10 of 13 so far. Manaya pulls the trigger on the inbounds. Comes in to grab it. Hase passed up an open look. Silva's on a post. Grab it, takes it all the way, and he got it! Plus the foul! I believe he even got that ball to the rim. Right. Who oh, is he breathing a lot easier? <laughs> Perhaps said, I, I've had enough of this business today. I'm going to win this thing for us right now. Critical free throw. Gets it. Two-point game. No timeouts remaining. Full court man to man, six and a half to play. It comes in, here comes Shaw. Shaw with three, Shaw with two, Shaw missed it, tap up, no! And the Gamecocks survive! They may take another look at this play, but it doesn't get any.